Well, I see that it's exactly 11 o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I was on a uh, flight last week from Spokane to uh, Lubbock, and we made, there were several different legs of that flight. One of the legs was from Salt Lake City to um, Phoenix. And uh, I sat by Rick Schroeder um, of NYPD Blue Fame. Uh, the whole flight, and he was asking me what I did for a living because I already knew what he did for a living. And uh, I told him I taught legal research and writing. And he looked at me and said, God, that sounds really dry. And I said, it's my life's work, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I kind of feel this morning. Um, this is my life's work. I'm glad that four of you showed up to see it. Um, I think a lot of people headed out yesterday after Star Wars. I think everybody came to see Star Wars and then and went back out. Anyway, so what I'm going to show you today is the interactive citation workstation. And uh, this came about, uh, real quickly, I was having lunch with um, Christine Hurt, who is now, uh, she has just accepted the position at University of Houston as the director of their legal writing and research program. We are having lunch one day, and we were talking about citation. Woo! Because that's the kind of exciting gals that we are. <laughs> and... Um, I mean, it just never stops. The fun never stops. So we were talking about citation, and in particular, the fact that we were afraid to go into the parking lot after dark because um, of the student reaction to our teaching of citation. And so we were brainstorming about a, a thing that we could do that would make it more interesting and more fun and would cut us out of the loop. Um, and so we had this great idea, and it started out with, well, first of all, we need to teach it in little bitty bits. We need to quit just throwing a bunch of citation rules at them all at once and giving them one exercise and saying, okay, that's it. You know, there's no about citation. And then marking up um, with ruthless accuracy their citations and every writing assignment for the rest of the year. So let's feed it to them in little bits. First, let's teach them how to do a case name. Then let's teach them how to do case names and reporters. Then case names reporters and parentheticals. And so we thought about that. And then we thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we had a computer program? And then, yeah, they can put it in, and then it'll show them the, the good stuff and the stuff they got right in blue and the stuff they got wrong in red. And, um, we have all sorts of grandiose ideas. And uh, unfortunately, we were having that conversation at lunch, and our uh, director was with us. And she said, that's an excellent idea. I think you could probably have a prototype ready by next spring. We're just fooling. We weren't really going to do anything. Um, so, of course, being the ambitious person that I am, I said, well, of course, I'm married to a programmer. <laughs> we can do that, no problem. So I went home and told my husband, who's right here, um, <laughs> uh, guess what we're doing? <laughs> and um, so that's how he got involved. And then there's a fourth person, um, Kay Holloway, who uh, we kind of enlisted her like Huck Finn. She came up to us and said, I heard y'all were doing the citation program thing. And we said, oh, yeah, but it's very complicated. And she said, well, I might like to help. Oh, I don't know. It takes a lot of skill and expertise. So I don't know if you're really up to it. Well, I can do anything. Oh, I don't know anything. We don't want to bother you with it. I can draft exercises. OK. <laughs> so, so Kay is painting our proverbial white fence for us. Um, so those are those are all the people that are involved. And then Brent and I got uh, 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 something tricked um, into actually doing the presentation. So here we are. Anyway, um, there are some things. The premise of the of the ICW, the Interactive Citation Workstation, is that. Um, there's a, there's a can versus should argument. And for those of you who saw um, uh, John Farrago yesterday, he talked about kind of what you can do versus what you should do with computers. And so that has really sort of informed our process, the can versus should. We think that there are some things that computers do extremely well and that we ought to use computers to do those things. Other things we think not so much. And so we'd like to free up our time to be doing those things. And finally, we should use our powers for good and not for evil. 
Um, I believe that we should use computers to supplement our teaching, not to supplant our teaching. I see a lot of things where I'm thinking, why are you even bothering showing up to work anymore? Um, there are things that they need professors for, and in particular, and I know there hasn't been a lot of talk at this conference, but I was at a conference last week where there, there was quite a bit of talk about this. Um, students need to know that we care about them. And if we pawn them off on a computer, they're not going to think we care about them anymore. Um, so if we can use computers in a way that demonstrates we care about you, we care about your learning process, and this is something that we're doing for you because we like you and because we want you to be happy. Um, I think that's a good use of computers. So there's the evil that we call a blue book. And as you can see from this little list, there's just a ton of problems. Students don't like it. Instructors don't like it. Um, there's a resource problem as far as teaching it, and then there's a solution, which I'm going to show you. The student complaints, um, we're caught in this double bind. You can't understand citation. If you know nothing about citation and I come into a room and I just tell you how to do it, you can't understand it. Um, you're going to go away and try to do it and think, well, she never told me how to do this. I did tell you how to do it, but you didn't have any place in your mind for it to belong on to. Or um, another thing that we have tried is send them out to do the citation exercises and then give a lecture so that they can put it in some context. Well, by the time you get to the lecture part, they're already mad at you. Um, and you really don't have the time, if you, especially if you're teaching citation in a research analysis and writing course uh, like we do, you don't have the time to do a citation lecture before and after for each of those concepts. Um, the most, we spend four uh, one-hour lectures on citation two in the fall and two in the spring, and that's all we can afford because um, there are so many other things that we've just got to do with them. So they get real frustrated. Um, the other thing is they actively rebel. Um, my students will stick with me through the first bad grade. Um, hmm. And like some of you, I'm the one who gives them the first bad grade. They'll stick with me through that. I've managed to get them to do that. They will not stick with me through citation. As soon as I give them that citation exercise, they think, she hates me and I hate her back. Um, and I don't blame them, quite frankly. Uh, so I, I can't afford to lose my students over citation. It's important, but it's not the most important I, thing I'm going to teach them. So I need to be able to keep a relationship with them and teach them citation at the same time. Um, and then the instructor constraints. I simply don't have time to do a lot of ongoing citation lectures. Um, I need to spend my time teaching them writing, and quite frankly, a monkey could teach citation. Um, this is not a conceptually difficult area. Citation is not. But there's a bunch of it. There's a lot of rules. So the blue book has about 350 pages in it. Every one of them just, you know, action-packed with uh, all kinds of rules. And um, while they need something that's kind of ongoing and baby steps, it's not necessarily me. My time is better spent teaching them uh, the virtues of Iraq and, and things like that. Um, and then finally, the resource problem, the thing that we've run into is we have never found a citation instruction method that, uh, that we're really happy with. Um, we've tried using exercises um, you know, that we draft, where we draft just like one or two really big exercises, kind of modeled after what's out there. We've tried some of the workbooks that take things in a little bit smaller steps, but, but not really. Um, and we haven't been happy with those because they don't take the students through the steps in small enough steps. They give you a long citation, and there are just a myriad of problems with the citation. Um, you know, there's a problem with the case name, there's too many parties in it, the recorder's wrong, the recorder's abbreviated wrong, the court date are wrong, it's the wrong writ history or the wrong subsequent history. I mean, there's everything wrong with it. And they can spend an hour easily, you know, on a citation. Um, and it, it gives them the feeling that I'm never going to learn this. You know, there's something wrong with every single bit of this. I'm, I'm just never going to get it. Um, 
The other problem we found with the workbooks is there's one set of exercises. And that means I can only use it for one year. And it's going to be three years from now before I can use those exercises again if I want to avoid the problem of folks handing down their citation answers, which is something that we, we do want to avoid. Um, so that's, that's kind of our resource problem that we've run into. So the solution is the interactive citation work section. So that's what it looks like. Um, here is the address if you want to go to it and play with it. Uh, we're in the process of getting a fancy name for it. Right now it's got the catchy title of 208.247.124.102. So it rolls right off the tongue. And it rhymes in some places, so you can just remember that. <laughs> You're thinking citation, and you're thinking, what would I, what would that be under if I were a citation? Oh, 208. Anyway. Okay, so here it is. And you'll see, first of all, that we have got um, three sets of exercises plus an advanced set. This is so that you can use this for your first year course and not have to get a different resource every single year. You can use the ICW um, as long as you need to because you're not going to have to repeat an exercise for three years. And then if you have an advanced research class, there's an advanced set for that. Um, the information we have on here right now is just kind of placeholder information. You can go back and read that at your leisure when you log on to the site. But I do want to point out at the bottom, um, all of our email addresses are on there. So if you want to get in touch with us about it, have any questions, have any suggestions, um, think this is a horrible waste of a life. Just email us and let us know. Um, so let's go to the exercise sets. Uh, if your computer supports a bunch of real fancy fonts, then you'll find out that this has a bunch of real fancy fonts. Um, this computer does not. So here are the exercises. And you'll see that, that, that primarily the cases are broken down into those little bitty bits. We have added um, although it's not up there yet, a short form exercise also. Um, if you're not in Texas, then just don't have them do the Texas Red History exercise. Um, so the case names exercise just do does just case names. Okay? Then the reporters adds case names and reporters. Court and date will then add the parenthetical, and it's going back and reinforcing all the concepts that were there before. Okay? So let me show you how that works precisely. It gives you some uh, some information, and on each exercise, it'll have at the beginning of each screen the name of the exercise up here, and then the general instructions for that exercise. Um, okay, so here's one of the case names, one. and so for the solution, let me flip through here. Um, we can put in what a first year law student might put in. Of course you're also probably looking at the screen. You know, type of that. No, it's just my guess. Okay. So then you, you're going to submit the solution after you type it in. You can try each of these up to three times before it tells you it's time to move on with your life and do another one. <laughs> Okay. Submit solution. Oh my goodness. I did abbreviate verses correctly, um, which I'm very proud of. You see, the things that come up in blue are things you got right, and of course, the things that come up in red are things you got wrong, just like we talked about at lunch, Christine. Um, for everything that you get incorrect, it pops up a set of rules for that field. It's not going to tell you specifically go back and fix this one little minute part, it's going to give them several rules for like the first party name, several rules for like the second party name. So we're not just giving them the answer, we're telling them if you're going to get this field right, you're, you're going to need to look at all of these rules. You'll notice that, for example, uh, descriptive terms is in there twice. That's because they missed it in each of these things. We went ahead and left it where it would duplicate the rules if you missed it in more than one field. So they would know 
Even if they fix it here, they're still going to fix it here. Okay? So, let me take a second stab at that um, and see if I can come up with something a little better. I'm going to take out these descriptive terms because, in my informed opinion, that is what's really fouling me up here. Well, heavens, I'm doing better, but I'm still not quite there. Um, shows me the part I got correct in blue and shows me the part I got incorrect in red. You'll notice this time it's only going to give you the hints for this uh, party name because that's the only one you got wrong. Okay? Um, so then I'm going to go in this time, and I have looked back at my blue rules, and I finally figured out what in the world I've done wrong, and I got correct. Okay. Um, so again, you get three times, and then it'll either give you a little dancing blue dot, which we're quite proud of, um, or it will give you a different input. This is like uh, we think. This is very much like having them come to your office and sit down with you and do an exercise where they take the first stab at it and you say, now hold on a second, why don't you look at these rules and have them look at those rules and let them try it again and then tell them, well, wait a minute, why don't you look at these rules? But you don't need a professor to do that. You can have a program that does that for you. Um, if you're just having them complete an exercise on paper and turning it in and you're correcting it, they're generally, when they get the exercise back, they're not going to go back and look at those rules. I didn't do it when I was in law school. My students tell me that they don't do it, and I don't believe for a second that they do. There's one citation geek in every law school who is doing it. Um, but, you know, there's only, there's only one or two of those per school. Um, so this way, they actually get the feedback at a time when it's useful to them, when they're actually using the rules. The other thing this does is, since they're having to go through the rules and try, and then go through the rules again and try it again, it gives them that body memory in their hands of how to flip through the blue book. We don't cover every single rule that's in the blue book. We don't need to cover every single rule that's in the blue book. I don't humor myself that they are going to remember five years from now how to look at an international, how to put a, an international treaty in proper citation form because I had them do one problem their first year of law school. What I do want them to do is know how to use the book, know where the index is, know generally that case names are in 10. Okay? And that's what this is going to get them to do. It's going to get them trained with the book, which is really the goal of citation exercises. Okay. So this is the next one, and you'll see that it builds on the previous one. You've got um, uh, you've got the case names uh, that needs to be corrected, and the uh, reporter that needs to be corrected. And so let me do that very quickly for you. incorporates the first two concepts in the reporter exercise. And I got that right. Next problem. Next one is the uh, parallel citation exercise. And I want to take you through one and show you what happens if you keep on getting it wrong. regional reporter. Um, but the student doesn't know that. But here's what they do know. Finally, I'm getting somewhere with case names. After three exercises, I'm finally getting somewhere with case names. So I've got that one. Um, and then it gives them all the rules for 
uh, the reporters in the parenthetical. And notice it tells them every single place to go. Um, spacing, we've included in a lot of these exercises because a lot of students really have those problems with spacing. Um, so let's go back in here. Let's adjust our citation for some of those rules, which is what they will do. And sees now, the student sees now that uh, they've got everything but the reporter. And they're just convinced it's a spacing problem. That's got to be what's wrong. Oh, but it's not. Okay. Um, my husband, he's a caring nurturer, originally had up here wrong answer. You need to study more. Um, we changed it to just sorry. I'm not sure. Okay. So then let's, let's pretend like we've just gone through an entire exercise. We've got it all out of the way. Um, that's the end of that exercise, and now here's what we get. Now we get a completion certificate. And you'll notice that this button says email results and go to ICW homepage. You can do two things with this completion certificate. You can click on that button, and if your professor is set up for this, you will email those results directly to your professor. Or if your professor is not set up for that, or if you are someone who prefers to have things in hard copy, um, you can just print out this page, and, uh, and that will be your record. It tells you how many problems the student completed, how many correct answers, how many total attempts, and how many average attempts per problem. So what I'll do is click on that. Now when I go home and get back to Texas Tech, I'm going to have an email that tells me uh, what I just did. You didn't see the uh, registration page. We don't have it on this demo um, because we don't have anybody registered yet, of course. So, um, so it'll, it just goes back to me on that. So anyway, so that's what it does. Um, we are going to be using it in our curriculum uh, this year. There are 15 total exercises, uh, little baby step exercises, plus one comprehensive exercise that's um, kind of in the nature of what previous citation exercises have been, where it's a lot of the rules, but they'll only do that one after they've done uh, a lot of the other things. Um, we are going to pace it out um, probably about, I think, 10 of them. Uh, in the fall semester and then about five of them in the spring semester. You can really pace this out any way you want to. Uh, whatever works for your curriculum, however you want to do it, you can pace that out. There is a workbook that goes along with it that has explanatory text um, of the, the kinds of things that you would tell your students in a citation lecture, but they will have it there in written form while they're doing the exercises. Again, we're trying to simulate as much as possible you helping them through the exercise, you actually being with them while they do it. So they can look at that stuff um, in the workbook. If, uh, I suspect this really does not apply to many of you since we are at the Cali conference. But if your school is not set up where you can have students do web-based exercises, you can, of course, uh, still have them do the actual exercises in the workbook, tear those out, turn them in, you still get the benefit of having them do the exercise in little bitty bite-sized pieces. You just don't get uh, this effect of having them try them over and over again and getting that feedback. Um, so that's it. That's how it works. I wanted to save the rest of the time for your questions. Yes. Yeah, I've got a couple of, I guess you call them technical questions. Sure. The first is, does this run exclusively on your server, or can it run on some sort of local server? The second is, what's the back end doing here? Is this Perl or Java, or what is this? And then I guess the third is, uh, what does it take for professors to write exercises for it? How hard is that? Um, this, is, this does not have, I will start with your last question first. This does not have like an authoring tool in it. So you couldn't take it, at, this version does not, later versions may. Um, so you couldn't write your own exercises uh, and put them into that at this time. Um, it runs on, uh, we've got it currently on a commercial server. We had it on um, our server at school. They had 
they said it was a power outage. I'm not quite sure how that caused the problem that we had. Um, but the so we moved it off the school server onto a commercial server. That's where it, that's going to be its permanent residence. This address right here. So if you want to use the interactive citation workstation, what you do is you get the workbook, and each workbook will have you know like in the back or in the front somewhere um, a registration password. And so each student registers on the site and uses it. Um, it will not be available um, everywhere until fall of 2000. We are taking beta applications um, and actually we're not good those. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to get a beta application, we've got them down here. Um, you can use the site and the workbook. Uh, for the first year free of charge um, if you would like to do that, if you'd like to be in the beta group that works on it. And then it will be available to everybody in the fall of 2000. And then the back end question. Um, as far as the development, it was the first couple of pages are just basic HTML static pages. Uh, most of the text comparison, all of that, is a CGI program that's written in Perl. Uh, Perl's very strong as far as uh, parsing and line splitting and all that kind of stuff. So that's why I selected Perl. Uh, right now, it's running on an MT server that's had Perl 5 ported to it. Yes? Uh, the, uh, the registration I take it will Exactly. Yes. Yes. And for yeah, and for the uh, uh, yeah, for the beta applications, um, I'm not I'm not sure how the how the registration is going to work on the final product. Uh, but for the beta applications, we will we will assign. A, we'll have you send us your class roster. We'll go ahead and assign passwords, and then send you a list that says here are the students, here are their passwords. Do you think the authoring tool will be done in time for the 17th edition? You can answer um, right all the questions yourself again. Um, I would say probably, uh, probably not. Um, we will, as soon as, as soon as the 17th edition comes out, of course, we'll go back and redo all the rules to make sure that they comply with the 17th edition. So when the 17th edition comes out, this will, this will, coordinate with it. Which is which is another benefit because you know this will be one of the first things that works with seventeenth editions. Yes. As you were going through the the actual correct way of course as we all know to do a case name is to have it underlined. Do you have that ability within this so that students know that even though they cannot underline, I know some your your answers it was not underlined also, which is something if you wanted to do it correctly, sure. you've got to put that in there. Even though you may not be able to do it physically, it, it, it's in there. Is that something you just haven't worked up to yet? Yeah, that's that will be ready by August. Okay. Yeah, the underlining will be in there by August. Underlining and talent Will the students then be able to underline while they're doing this, or will it just come up and say, remember, you also need to underline? No, no, no. They will, they will underline it or italicize it. Because another thing that we think is important, um, a lot of citation exercises have them handwriting citations. Another thing that we think is important is for them to also get the feel of typing those citations and typing them the correct way. And that includes, of course, underlining or italicizing. Yeah. Yes? Another question that it flows into the Blue Book. You've got this based in Texas, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. Are you defaulting to the rule which says you are not submitting to a Texas court throughout the entire process? Um, I have trouble with those questions that have a negative. Um, the exercises are not written so that they cater to Texas okay. students. You are you, so you don't assume that you're sending it to a Texas court. The exercises tell you specifically. You are submitting this in a court in a in a memorandum um, attached to a motion going to a Missouri Court of Appeals or going to the West Virginia Supreme Court. 
So it, it tells you specifically the only one that, te that is Texas specific is Texas Red History. Yes? Uh, there's an e-competing Google text coming out, not, not from Harvard. ALWD? Right, right. Are, are you going to make a program for that? Yeah, we're going to have, um, we won't have it for this fall, uh, but for next fall, there will be a page in front of this where you select either Blue Book or ALWD. <laughs> And so, for us, it's just a matter of picking, you know, using the same exercises and picking out the rules that apply. Yes, I think you have your hand up for a while. Um, have you even thought of contacting Harvard, or maybe you've contacted Harvard and have asking them if you could put hypertext links when you view the rules? Uh, I have not thought of that, right so obviously I haven't done it. That's not a half bad idea. I mean, if you want to truly make this interactive, what I noticed is I, I, I'm cheating. I, I can't see that far. I have it right here. Sure. What I noticed as I went through it, if you don't have your blue book with you, which every law school, law school student never goes without theirs. <laughs> they do carry it around all day. That's why we see them laying around all over the school. They never go anywhere with them. But nevertheless, I think I thought my, my first reaction was, yes, you had the rules listed there, but wouldn't it be nice if Harvard would grant you the rights to hypertext link to them and make it electronically available? That way you, you would see the rule or at least allow you to reproduce the text of the rule mm -hmm. in, in a link, but somewhere else within the back of your page. That's an excellent idea. Or possibly an example of what the correct answer would mm -hmm. look like. But not the examples from the blue book itself, but it's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're here like that. If, it, if we felt like the blue book was a, uh, a satisfactory, self-explanatory tool... Right, you wouldn't do this. <laughs> right, you wouldn't do this. But at least when you make reference to the rules, it'd be really nice... If I get the yeah, yeah. high text right to them. Now, it's probably worth asking them That's about. good, yeah. That's good. Probably. Do you have, or will you have a... Uh, a module, as it were, or some portion for law review citation style? We don't at this time, um, and we uh, that's the first time we've gotten this question, so at this point we don't know if there's sufficient demand for it. Um, if there is, we'd certainly be happy to add one in there. Um, now that we've got the initial programming down, uh, you know, we can just go bananas. You know, law review, sure, whatever. You know, so yeah, it would be easy enough to add. Um, it won't be in the beta testing version, uh, but in the fall 2000 version, you might look and see if it's there then. And if you want to send me an email with that specific question, um, I'll hold on to that and, and keep you updated on it. Thanks. Yes. Are you going to limit your beta tests? I mean, to a certain number of schools and a certain number of students within each school, or is it if everybody here at the conference wants to pay a test to that kind of work for you this year also? We had originally planned to limit it to a small number of schools. Um, the response we have gotten has been really incredible so far. Um, since we have gotten such a great response, I would like to have as many beta testers as possible. I'd like to have as many people out there using it and commenting on it as are willing to do so. So I will have to, um, I'll have to get with Christine and Kay and make that decision when we get back. So originally the idea was a few schools, now we're thinking maybe not, if, if we can manage the data, so all those schools. What do you expect to be charging for it in fall of 2000? I don't have any idea, um, but let, let me tell you my feeling behind the charging for it. Um, this has this has been a, a fairly um, complicated undertaking uh, to do this, and so we're not quite willing to just you know set it out there uh, for free. Um, eventually, our egos may shrink small enough to where we do that. Uh, right now, we're all legal writing professors, and um, we get so little recognition <laughs> for anything. That uh, you know, we're just excited that we can stand up and say something, and somebody will listen. Um, I don't want a, 
and I, I think we all feel this way, we don't want it to be so expensive that it's really kind of onerous. Um, I don't expect it to be any more expensive than a soft back workbook. So, we're, we're, we're not, we don't want to get rich. We, we certainly don't expect to get rich off of it. So, we want to keep it, we want to keep it affordable. We think this is something that every law school can use, and so we want to make sure it's affordable enough so that every law school can use it. Keeping in mind that we understand that your Blue Book uh, supplement should not be the most expensive thing or even nearly the most expensive thing that you assign for a legal research or writing course because you've got to assign a legal writing tax. Some of you have an additional legal research tax. And those are really paramount. That's why we did the ICW, because those issues are paramount. So we will price that affordably, keeping, keeping all those things in mind. Yes? The workbook that goes along with this, is this going to be a, a downloadable from your site workbook, or is this just something the students will have to send away for, or the law schools will have to send away for to get a sufficient number? The law school bookstore will have to order them just like any other book. For the beta version, we'll ship them out to you. Any other questions? Well, I appreciate you um, uh, sitting here and listening to this. This is really, it's very exciting for us. We're, we're thrilled about it. It's going to save us four hours of lecture time and several hours of grading time, which we can use to uh, uh, do other things. We hope that you have the same experience with it. Thank you. I do. I do. Oh, yes. Pedagogically, do you expect the students to use this outside the classroom, but are you going to make it mandatory that they spend X number of hours on it outside the classroom? No, it is completion of the exercises will be mandatory. However much time it takes them to do it is however long it takes them to do it. Um, but we'll only, you know, like this week, do the case names exercise, and then we'll get the completion certificate. 